Today's module is on program representations. So, what is a program representation? One of the better known ways to represent a program for you as a developer, as a programmer, is, well, obviously kind of source code. So, source code would be in the form of some source files in Java, in C, Python, program, or anything like that. The second way to represent programs is in a runnable form, so as executables. If you run them through the compiler, the compiler will basically convert source code to executables. But there are other representations of programs, not just those two things you would store in files. You also have in-memory representations that are quite important to understand, in particular if you're interested in building compilers or building program analysis tools. So you can represent a program or programs are often represented in memory in, in various forms, in some kind of form of a, a tree or in the form of a list or in the form of a graph. And Obviously, as a programmer or a software developer, you've already drawn pictures of programs or diagrams that represent your system in some way. And there are also more formal models that model all or a subset of the properties of your programs. So that's how you represent programs. We'll look at that in much more detail. But why or who would need such a representation? So Compilers, I already mentioned, is one of the key things that requires programs, that actually takes as input programs and produces as output programs, just in two different languages. The source file is in some language and the binary file it usually produces is basically a translation into different language. Optimizers are another kind of tool or software that takes programs and some representation and produces programs in some representation, usually in the same representation. So you take, for example, a binary program and feed it to an optimizer and that optimizer makes that program faster and spits out a faster version of the same program. Often optimizers are actually part of compilers. Okay, so you have an optimizing compiler that doesn't just translate from one language to the other, but it also makes a translated version reasonably fast. Another set of tools that operate on programs are binary rewriting tools. Now I'm saying binary, I could actually say rewriting tools because you can rewrite source code also. So there are tools. You could actually also classify them as program analysis tools. There are tools that analyze programs. For example, to find bugs in programs, to check certain properties of programs, to find memory leaks in programs, to find whether programs are secure or not. So those program analysis tools, there are two types of them, either the static ones and the dynamic ones. The static ones, they're actually measuring or looking at the program as it is, as an artifact. So they look at the program representation and they say good or bad, or they find some properties. The dynamic ones, they rewrite the programs. So they take a program as input, like a compiler. They produce a program as output, like a compiler or an optimizer. The output program does the same thing, but in addition, it also does something else. It's instrumented and it does a dynamic analysis. So you run the program, the program does its normal task, and as a side effect also, produces, for example, a profile saying how fast it was, or a trace saying what it did and in which order. So that's the overview on program representations.